Right, hello everyone. It is currently quarter past seven on June 17th, 2024. Um, that's 7.15 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this is going to be my first ever weather forecast video. I'm going to be doing it for the state of Florida here, which is where I live. Um, I have not done one of these before, and a quick disclaimer, I am not a meteorologist of any kind. I don't have any certifications regarding weather or meteorology or anything like that. I'm just a nerd who loves weather and loves looking at maps. So uh, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get started here. So I am currently looking at the windy.com weather radar here. This is the current radar. This is what the radar has looked like over the past 12 hours. So from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. as of Monday 17th of June. Um, as you can see, over most of the peninsula, there's not a ton going on. There's a few light showers in um, the far southern regions of Florida around Boca Raton and the Everglades. A little bit going on in the northern regions, uh, Palm Coast area. And there's a whole bunch of storms that did pop up earlier today around Panama City and Crestview in the uh, Panhandle, in the far western regions of the Panhandle. However, they did pretty quickly move off into Alabama and didn't cause too much of an issue. Looks like there was some thunder and lightning out there, but um, yeah, nothing particularly intense. Let's go ahead and look at the forecast radar. Let's go to weather and thunder mode. And let's look at the HRRR model first. So um, this is the... Uh, this looks like it's at Tuesday. Let me go back to now. Um, I'm going to hit play here, and we're going to go throughout the night here. Um, there's the chance of a bit of rain here and there, mostly more towards the south and on the northeast side of Florida, um, like south of Jacksonville and the general Jacksonville metro region. Uh, there could potentially be a little bit of rain here and there, um, but there's not really a lot going on. Um, as you see, we are now at the early morning and midday, and there is some weather moving ashore from the east. Um, there is a east, a strong east wind right now, so that's going to be affecting the weather on the east coast for sure. As you can see, there's a bit of rain moving into central Florida here, but uh, nothing particularly severe. There's probably not going to be too much lightning or thunder for the most part. Of course, we are in Florida. Um, thunderstorms tend to just pop up out of the blue here. We get the popcorn thunderstorms because of all that humid air and convection. So, um, yeah, on Wednesday, there could be some more intense storms on the far southwest tip of Florida, which is mainly Everglades down there, and um, also around the Palm Coast, Daytona Beach area, there could be some storms as well. So let me roll that back a little bit, as you can see here. That is Wednesday morning. There is a potential for some storms up here. Um, nothing super severe, but that is some pretty heavy rain there, so um, be wary of that. Cocoa Beach could get a bit as well. Now, I should... Note that this is simulated radar, so um, this is this is what might happen. Uh, it's definitely not 100% accurate. What this is basically saying is, in this general region around, like in between Palm Coast and Cocoa Beach, and also the like far south southern tip of Florida, there is a greater risk of rain in these areas at this moment than. Uh, than everywhere else, basically, which shows basically nothing. Um, let's go to the NAM model now, which is also a pretty accurate simulated radar. Uh, if we move, let's look at South Florida first. Let's just skip this forward a little bit. The NAM shows showers all across the east coast of Florida. Um, they're probably forming out to sea, on the warm waters, I mean, coming ashore. And um, yeah, that kind of doesn't really change much throughout Tuesday. The chances spread out a bit, but like there's, it's nothing particularly severe. Uh, again, something is severe could pop up locally, anywhere in this region because we are in Florida and there's a lot of convection at this time of year, especially in the evenings. So um, just bear that in mind. As we move forward into Wednesday morning, we can see there is more rain possible, and uh, a bit like the H R model, it does show higher chances of rain between Daytona Beach and Cocoa Beach. Um, so around the Kennedy Space Center and areas um, northwest of Orlando, or northeast of Orlando, I should say. Um, and of course, South Florida too, looks like it's expecting rain uh, just north of Fort Lauderdale on the South Florida metro region in the morning. And uh, yeah, more broadly, the southern tip of Florida is likely to have some rain. Um, the NAM model also thinks some storms could pop up off the coast of uh, St. Petersburg and St. Pete Beach. It doesn't look like they will actually impact 
the Tampa Bay region, but they're going to form off the coast there, as you can see. Um, moving up, there could be a bit of rain around uh, south of Tallahassee, somewhere near Panama City. Uh, it's not looking too severe. Yeah, it looks like Panama City could get something and Pensacola later in the day as well. So, um, yeah. Okay, before I talk temperatures, I want to quickly pull up the Hurricane Tracker because there is an area of development down here um, just off of the coast of the uh, Yucatan Peninsula and, like, southern Mexico. There is a tropical storm down here. It looks like it's expecting... In fact, this is now... It looks like this is already a tropical storm because 40 mile an hour winds are tropical storm territory. Uh, it could reach 46 miles an hour sustained at, on Wednesday the 19th and it's going to move into Mexico so like it's not a big deal for Florida. But so I just figured I'd mention this because it is that time of year. Um, it's not going to be a threat to us luckily. But uh, yeah, a tropical storm is basically a category zero hurricane. That's the way I think of it. Um, it's certainly less severe than more intense hurricanes but it's still going to pack a punch. All right, time to talk temperatures. So um, Florida is generally same old, same old at this time of year. It's hot and humid all the time, basically, like even at night. Um, so, so for example, this is 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning right now, the forecast for 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning. Um, as you can see, it's very warm, and that's because the humidity is really high. It just can't cool down, basically. Um, so cold weather never happens at this time of year. Um, 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, this is about 23 -ish degrees celsius for my european counterpart uh for reference so yeah the panhandle region that's the general temperature the east coast is going to be warmer for the next few days overnight and slightly cooler during the day because there is an onshore east wind so that's pulling um uh, very mild air off of the atlantic because the atlantic's around about uh 85 mid 80s the water temperature right now um, i will show you guys that in more detail in a minute but um yeah these are the forecasted temperatures for Tuesday morning. Uh, if we go to 3 p.m., as you can see, we get up into the upper 80s across most of the state, although in the on the east side of Florida, the east coast, it's going to be a bit cooler because of those aforementioned easterly winds. Uh, Panhandle is going to be the warmest area, and this is going to be a trend throughout the week. Um, it actually gets a lot hotter over the next few days, especially in the Panhandle. Um, the humidity is always going to be a bit lower, so that's the one saving grace that uh, the Panhandle and Northern Florida has here. Um, of course, that easterly wind is, you know, pushing humidity on shore along the east coast. Um, west coast is still going to be pretty humid because, well, I mean, it's the peninsula. But yeah, North Florida is going to be hotter and less humid, generally speaking. Um, if I drop back to temperature here and let's move to 7 a.m. on Wednesday. As you can see, it's the same story. Mid 70s in the north. Uh, and most of the state actually, it's only warmer on the east coast where it's going to be in the mid to upper 70s. Um, middle of the day, it's going to be mid 80s, lower 80s across most of the peninsula, but again, up in the north, it's going to be mid 90s. Um, for reference here, for my European counterparts, uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit is 32 degrees Celsius. So 95 is about 34, 35 maybe. Um, so yeah, these are very high temperatures. Again, the saving graces, those low dew points and the low humidity. So, um, you know, it's going to feel a bit more reasonable in the shade up here. Your sweat is going to work more effectively. But, um, you know, there's there's not much in it. Like, it's still going to be hot. Um, down here, it's much more humid in the bulk of Florida. Um, cooler temperatures, of course, but don't let that fool you. The high humidity is going to make it feel significantly hotter than this. Like, you can add 10 degrees to this temperature and it's that's how it's gonna feel basically excuse me um, first day morning uh, largely the same situation although that wind in the northern parts of florida barring jacksonville will start coming out of the northeast so um that is going to bring lower dew points as you can see i'm on the dew point map here which is just another measure of humidity so um it's going to feel a little more reasonable in the mornings up here um in the rest of the state the dew points are still high so yeah, it's, it's going to feel very muggy on those mornings. Uh, and this is when it starts getting really hot in the panhandle areas. So as you see, it's sustained mid-90s up here. If I go to Friday at 3 p.m. and Saturday, in fact, it's really the weekend. That's that's when it starts getting really hot. So we're going to see triple-digit temperatures here. Um, on both sides of Tallahassee, north of Gainesville, it's going to get hot. So Lake City, I know Lake City's over here. 
it's going to be hot on Saturday. Uh, now, of course, again, saving grace is for low humidity. It's going to be around 25%. So, you know, in the shade, you can cool off. But uh, in the sun, it's gonna the sun's going to feel like a laser beam. You know, it's going to be very hot up here. Um, in fact, speaking of sun, let's look at the cloud map. Let's see how it's looking here. Yeah, it's going to be really clear. So, hot and dry. Um, that sun is going to be a laser beam, for sure. So, you know, be prepared. Be very prepared. Um, rest of Florida is going to be much more temperate. Um, I mean, of course, again, with the humidity, especially with this southern wind now, um, it's going to feel... It's going to feel much hotter than it looks. Um, the rain chances are also going to pick up as uh, as the week goes on into the weekend. So um, yeah, the rest of the state we're going to that's going to help with temperatures, right? It's going to moderate the temperatures. Um, but in North Florida, that's not really going to happen. So it's just hot and dry up there. Um, this is now 3 p.m. Sunday. Let me go back to temperature. As you can see, Gainesville and north of Gainesville and inland from Jacksonville um, and areas around Tallahassee. And yeah, anywhere not near the ocean is going to be very hot, and that that applies into most of the country actually. Yeah, there's there's a heat wave going on right now, so it's no joke. Be careful, be careful out there. Here is a rain forecast for the next ten days across the peninsula. So um, as you can see, it's <laughs> there's not going to be any rain at all up north. So you know, it's, it really is you know heat wave weather up there. Um, this is not a good situation for the area. There is quite a severe drought going on up here. So, um, yeah, hopefully they can get some rain soon, but it's not going to be in the next 10 days. Uh, the rest of the state is a bit wetter. Um, this is definitely drier than average for the time of year. June usually averages between 6 and 8 inches per month, depending on where exactly you are in the state. So, um, the fact that there's only 1 inch in the Tampa Bay region over the next 10 days is a bit lackluster. Um, Further south, it does get wetter, as you can see, southwest Florida, regions around Cape Coral and Naples, it is, uh, there's going to be a bit more rain down here. Uh, the south Florida metro region as well, we're going to get between 1.5 and 2 inches around here. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, a fair bit of rain, and look at all this. <laughs> That's the uh, tropical system out here, that's uh, going to be spinning around, affecting Mexico. It looks like it's going to mainly drop its rain on the Gulf of Mexico. So, uh, yeah, 20 inches, wow, that's nuts. Uh, let's quickly move over to the drought monitor here. So uh, this is as of yesterday. Let's move this forward. Um, so that's this is today. There is a extreme drought in the northern parts of Florida. So um, south of Ocala and Daytona Beach, it's there's not really much drought risk happening. There's a tiny little bit here and there, but like this is nothing really to worry about. Moving on to sea temperatures, as you can see, it is uh, 86 degrees Celsius, basically all around, mid to low 80s. Um, north of Port St. Lucie, it's slightly cooler, it's around about 80, 81. Um, so, if you want to go swimming around this area, you know, you may feel a bit of a chill when you first get in the water, but, like, you're going to adjust to it very quickly. Um, of course, this is concerning from a tropical storm and hurricane standpoint. Um, these waters are warmer than average for the time of year, so... You know that risk is always there. However, if you want to go off swimming, this is uh, this is wonderful, wonderful water temperatures to do that in. Um, if we go to the weather warnings, there are rip current uh, statements all along the east coast, pretty much of Florida and up into South Georgia as well. And there's a bit along the Panhandle as well by around Pensacola. Um, so just be aware of that if you're out swimming. Don't go too far out because um, you may get caught up in a rip current. Alright guys, that will wrap up this video. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this style of video. I've never done anything like this before. This is uh, very much an experiment, a work in progress. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe. And um, yeah, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.